coming up. A misbehaving boy disappears in the forest after parents abandon him. (laughs) I don't know why I'm laughing. Anyway, a dreaded superbug has been found in a U.S. woman. (laughs) <laughs> no, not phys. Anyway, um, <laughs> fearing forced Windows 10 upgrades, users are disabling critical updates instead. A new study suggests Americans, is it just Americans? Anyway, Americans <laughs> don't trust AI systems. North Korean state media offers support for wise politician Donald Trump. Do you ever need a clear reason not to support that jerk? <laughs> MySpace and Tumblr hit by large data breaches from 2013. Intel launches first ever 10 core desktop processor. Woo! And more on this episode of What's. And thank you for joining us once again. This is the Wide Open Talk Show for June 1st, 2016. I'm Donovan Atkinson. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host and friend, Samuel Lewis. Sam, how's it going? How's your day been? It's been good. It's been one of those sort of low-key days where you just get some stuff done, relax, and and stay inside because you will melt if you don't. <laughs> oh, ain't that the truth? I don't know what the temperature has been getting to in your neck of the woods, but down here in south central Georgia, I think it actually hit around about 94 or 95 degrees. It's been at least 80s around here. I can't remember exact temperatures, but yeah. It, it finally gave up today and rained for like a couple of minutes. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're done with this. And it was literally a couple of minutes and then it was done again. So it was just too humid. Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, when uh, my daughter and I went walking this morning, I, I, I pointed out, I said, hmm, looks like it rained last night. She said, you reckon? And then she told me because... She and Tyler both are generally up around this time, three and four in the morning. Mm -hmm. She said, yeah, it was, uh, actually, she told me it woke her up at three o'clock because it was tap, 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 not on, it was tapping on the north facing window and the east facing window, Mm -hmm. which was weird. But, uh, and then Tyler told me, of course, it actually had rained twice. I, you know, we're in that season right now where, the temperatures get up in the the mid nineties, close to a hundred, and then in the late afternoon, you have a tendency to have those those butt kicking thunderstorms. I mean, the the skies are clear, not a not a, a cloud in the sky. Thirty minutes later, you look up and it looks like Armageddon has just <laughs> sprung on your ass. Yeah, and it's like boom, 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 and then the bottom just falls out, and you know, twenty minutes later. You you go out and pick up part of your roof and put it back on, <laughs> <laughs> and then you go about your day. So yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, anyway, this is a call in show, and the number is two two nine five one eight three five two five. That's two two nine five one eight three five two five. And let's get started with the very first story of the day. This is actually from Monday. Uh, it was posted on CBS News, and this is the one about the misbehaving boy that disappeared in the forest after his parents abandoned him. Now, I know I kind of laughed, and I wasn't laughing because the child is lost. Right. But I knew the story behind it already. And so this is in Japan, and the boy is seven years old. And he is missing in a forest that is in the northern part of Japan. Mm -hmm. And... Apparently, what it was is they were at the river or what have you, and the child decided, as most children do, that it's a good idea to throw rocks at at vehicles and people as they pass by. I mean, why not? It's what you do as a seven-year-old child, right? I wouldn't have had that idea as a seven-year-old child for very long, but anyway, carrying on. (laughs) I know, right? Well, My parents would have fixed that pretty dang quick. (laughs) Well, apparently, his parents didn't know any other way to try to fix this other than, um, you're not going home with us. And they just <laughs> left him there. Yeah. They, I I get the, it's a fake out, right? Yeah. If, if you were doing this properly, you would go around the corner, <laughs> wait a minute, or even like 30 seconds, and then come back and see, now the fear you just felt, do you want to do that anymore? No. Okay, get in a dang car. <laughs> right, right. So the article, I don't think it actually, yeah, it does. 
He says, the father returned to the site a few minutes later, but the boy was gone. So I don't know what a few minutes later is. Was that five minutes, 15 minutes? Right. Going around the quote unquote block, I would think five minutes and, you know, maybe the child would still be there scared out of his wits, probably soiled his pants. And I'm not sure you'd really want him to ride home with you. You might want to strip him naked and then wash him in the river. (laughs) So anyway, they got 150 rescue workers were searching the wooded area on uh, Hokkaido, or Hokkaido, I think, which is the northernmost of Japan's four main islands. And yes, mm-hmm. I will butcher those names for the rest <laughs> of my life. I, I just, I, I don't, I don't speak Japanese. I'm sorry. Mm. So, the BBC is reporting that that particular forest is known to be home to wild uh, bears. Which I have to admit, when I first read this, I thought it said wild boars, but it's saying oh. wild bears. And the reason why that, that actually came up as a topic of discussion, because uh, Tyler was telling me that wild boars have actually become a problem in Japan because of the Fukushima reactor situation. Mm-hmm. People moved away, and so they're not there to kill the wild boars, so the wild boars are now propagating, and, well... There you have it. I yeah, th- boars, th- boars become a problem no matter where. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was last year, because I'm connected to things, it's, it's where I am, but I think Kentucky had a problem with wild boars last year, if I'm not mistaken, and they, they actually lifted restrictions and said, guys, help us out here. We got problems. We, we want to keep everything level instead of them taking over the entire ecosystem because there was a danger of them possibly doing that. So it's... It, Wild boars are a problem. <laughs> yeah, and and these particular wild boars are actually a prop. Uh, they're they're having sex and having little ones in in a supposedly in a radiated area. So you can only imagine. We're gonna a couple of years from now, we're gonna have to be fending off you know uh, mutant boars. They're gonna have like telepathic powers and. It's going to be a fantastic Japanese movie where the vocals don't match up with the mouth movement. But that was a terrible tangent. I was going somewhere with it. But anyway, you're just going to let me stick here, right? Hello? There. Okay. My my mic went out for a second, and I wasn't even sure why. I was like, what? (laughs) I was thinking, damn, that was pretty bad. Because I realized I wasn't hearing myself. And I was like, wait, what the heck? And then it just... Okay. Yeah, I hear you now. Do you hear you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, as I was saying, because a bunch of I've, oh, I may I may get it wrong. This is like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles way back in the back of my head. We're gonna have a bunch of bebops running around. I think that was the pig. I think that was the pig. Anyway, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was definitely. Yeah, I think you're right. It's bebop. I should know this because I just looked at the trailer yesterday for the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Mm. Which, of course, has got one of my favorite actors in it, Stephen Amell, mm. who plays Arrow. Right. <laughs> anyway, all right, so uh, I don't believe there's any further updates to this story. The parents originally lied to uh, authorities because <laughs> they were embarrassed. <laughs> uh. And, of course, you know, he said... Um, the boy's father said in an interview with public broadcaster NHK and other TV stations that, quote, I regret what I did to my child. You think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, well, is this the week of just bad parenting? I guess so. I don't <laughs> mm. All right. Um, so we've heard over the last several years that we are running the risk of, through our, our, our rampant usage, if you will, of antibiotics, uh, particularly when we don't need to use them uh, because they are overprescribed by our doctors a lot of times. Mm. Um, doctors sometimes don't really know what to give you, so they just give you a, a broad-spectrum antibiotic and go here. And so, you know, the, the science community has been warning us for years and years and years that if we continue to do that, we could be approaching the dreaded superbug that no matter what we have in our arsenal, will not be able to kill it. And they're saying that we, looks like fate is upon us 
Um, mm-hmm. There's a 49-year-old Pennsylvania woman who has shown a the presence of a rare kind of E. coli infection, which is the first known case of its kind in the United States. And it is being considered a superbug because it is resistant to colistin, which mm-hmm. is the end-all, last resort, if it doesn't kill this, it's probably going to kill you kind of stuff. And it didn't kill it. And mm. once I read this, this is what brought up some questions for me. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second because I um, just want to go ahead and fill out these particulars. The case was detailed in a report by the U.S. Department of Defense on Thursday. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Director T- Dr. Tom Friedman talked about the case at the National Press Club in Washington. The woman went to a clinic in Pennsylvania, and a sample was forwarded to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Walter Reed found the bacteria in her urine. There is no indication of how the bacteria got into the woman's system. She's not traveled outside the United States within the past past five months. Hmm. So the CDC and the Pennsylvania Department of Health mobilized immediately to start investigating the case and to to trace her contacts to see whether or not the bacteria had spread. Now, here's what I didn't understand. We have just been told that this woman has a rare form of E. coli, Mm. that the baddest of the bad antibiotics, colistin, will not kill. Right. Then they say the woman was treated and released and has no other medical problems related to the bacteria that we know of, according to Dr. Alex Callan, a medical officer with the CDC. Uh, so it's in her, but it's, well, for lack of better terms, not attacking her? Is I, that I guess that's it. I guess she's a carrier. But if that's the case, doesn't it make sense to quarantine this woman? I mean, I'm, I'm not for imprisoning her because she has right. something that can't necessarily be, be fixed. But right now, but we're just going to, number one, what was the treating? What did we treat her with? What did we do? I mean, they gave her colistin and it didn't do a damn thing. So what did we treat her with? And then we released her. So that was my first question I had with this article was, okay, so now we know we've got the presence of this, this superbug, this rare form of E. coli in this woman. And she's just walking around. Well, you normally get E. coli off of food and stuff like that, right? I don't know if it would actually be spreadable through other human beings or not. Well, I think I'm not a scientist. I don't even play one online. But all I know is that E. coli is supposed to be bad, bad, bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And you don't want it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You definitely don't want it. Now, the other interesting thing is that the U.S. Department of Agriculture has found a strain of colistin-resistant E. coli in a single sample of pig intestine. So now they are trying to determine which farm the pig came from. Mm. So I'm going to go a little conspiracy theory on you here. Okay. Lee and I were actually talking about this, and I'm doing this a little bit (laughs) tongue-in-cheek. But this is a terrorist attack from the radical Muslims. (laughs) <laughs> because they don't eat pork. They view pork as unclean and ungodly. And the United States is the biggest consumer of, of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to destabilize our economy by, <laughs> by killing all of our pigs. <laughs> and if they take a few of us out at the same time, the more's the better. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. The first, folks. I, it's a terrorist attack. <laughs> That that's a plot that a CBS crime drama would come up with. I guarantee you, <laughs> they'd have they'd have Sherlock investigating it. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Whenever we were talking about that, I said that is one of the craziest damn. Wait a minute, I got to write this down. <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> That's inspired of me. I've got to write this insanity down. <laughs> yes, yes, I love my insanity. I'm embracing my insanity, definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah, but see, I, I I know the Jews, the chat room, I know the Jews don't eat pork, but 
I don't believe they're terrorists. <laughs> At least not here. <laughs> they're, uh, uh, th- that's a whole different discussion. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. It looks like that we could be potentially on the cusp of of seeing more of these superbugs. Uh, I, I believe this is the first one ever reported mm. that was callistin resistant. So, I mean, what do you do? Yeah, I know. It's rough, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think I know what you do. You die. Unfortunately. Yeah. It may be the only thing. Um, well, think about it. And this is something a lot of people don't, don't like to think about, but let's think about it. Mother Nature has a way of thinning the herd mm. when the population gets too vast and it looks like resources are, are about to, to run out. Yeah. I mean, look at, look at the, uh, the Black Plague, the Black Death, whatever. Um, you know, pneumonia uh, back whenever we didn't have tools to be able to fight it. Uh, and, and with all of the advancements in our modern science, We've been able to extend our lives, arguably, arguably artificially, mm. by fighting off some of these things. Um, Mother Nature is just not having it. She's saying, you know what? Seven billion people. I think that's enough. About time to cut about two billion of you. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Mm. <laughs> Whether it's true or not, I don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, techie news. Mm. Fearing forced Windows 10 upgrades, users are disabling critical updates instead. Now, I know you've you've seen some things about this, and we've we yeah. actually talked about it before. Um, you know, Microsoft is is really hell bent on everybody upgrading the Windows 10. They are. Um, you know, they've they started out. It was free. It's going to be free to the end of July. Um. You started having these little pop-ups on your Windows 7 and your Windows 8, 8 1 machine saying, hey, get your free upgrade. Mm. And then they moved it. Uh, they moved it from one type of update to like a recommended update. I don't know now if it's being considered a critical update, which I think okay. it is. And they've changed it where now the pop-up, which says, hey, your upgrade has been scheduled for X, you know, time. And you're thinking, well, I'm just going to exit, you know, I'm going to click the X on this window and I don't have to deal with this. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. You click the X, all you've done is just close the window. That thing is still scheduled to upgrade your machine at whatever time it told you. Yeah. Uh, there, There are other methods that you have to go through to actually stop it from doing this automated upgrade. Uh, and Microsoft's coming out saying, no, 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 that X has always been like that. No. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> because Paul Therott, who is like, you know, Microsoft Jesus, said mm-hmm. that that's not the way it used to be. And I believe him. Yeah, and, and even Paul Therott says it, then you're caught. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So now you've got people going, well, I'm just going to turn off critical updates on my Windows 7 or Windows 8. Uh, installation because I don't want to run the risk of waking up one morning and finding out that I'm now running the shiny new Windows 10 desktop and half my crap doesn't work. Which, by the way, statistically, that does not happen. Mm -hmm. Most of the software still works. There's some funky driver issues. Uh, A friend of ours, um, Randy, uh, he doesn't mind if I I say his name. Um, I, I helped him last weekend try to now he couldn't do an in place upgrade on his Vista because you can't do that on Vista. You actually have to buy the software. Or he goes to college, so he was able to get the educational version free. Hmm. Well, once we threw went through all these hoops and he finally got it installed, he was using a Linksys AE twenty five hundred USB wireless adapter. Windows ten did not have a driver for it. It showed up in Device Manager with its little triangle exclamation point going, I don't know what to do with it. And Linksys, uh, Cisco slash Linksys, they do not make a Windows 10 driver for it. However, the cool thing about that is 
the Windows 7 driver works. So mm -hmm. all you have to do is go to the website, download the zip file, unzip it, tell the thing you want to update the driver, tell it you have the driver, point to that folder, and voila. In his particular case, the problem was he had to be able to get online in the first place to get said driver. Yeah. Yeah. So he came over and I gave him like a 25-foot Ethernet cable to get across his room so he could hook up to his to his cable modem. Yeah. So, I mean, you'll run into stuff like that occasionally, but for the most part, Windows 10 is a rock-solid, very good operating system that in many ways actually outperforms Windows 7 and Windows 8. Not mm -hmm. in all aspects, but the core was completely written from the ground up, from what I understand. And it's a much better operating system at its core than its previous versions. The problem that we're having is Microsoft's boneheaded desire to force everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, force everybody to go to it. Mm. I mean, give it, give it for free. That's fine. And say, look, we recommend you do this. But they're, they're just basically like showing up your house at your front door going, well, here's your copy of Windows 10. Let us come on in and install it for you. No, just mm -hmm. give it to No, 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 no. We got to come in and install it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure that your wife is scantily clad while we're doing it too. So, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. And then, you know, you run the risk here when people are like, I'm not going to do these critical updates. Well, you know, you're just going to open yourself up to vulnerabilities that you're not going to get patched that are discovered almost on a weekly basis, and your machines could effectively get compromised. Mm. So now you're running, you finally went back up to 10 on your laptop, right? Or Yeah. Okay. Have you had any problems with it? Let's see. The only problem that I have had is, and, and a reinstall fix this one, but my drive for the um, SD cards, there we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> had to come up with the name. Uh, but the SD card drive had stopped working, and then suddenly it did after I bought a card reader. That's when it started working again. Go figure. <laughs> um, and then I hadn't realized this was a problem either until I got a music submission. Because of my Triple M that I do, I sometimes get CDs from artists, right? So I went to pop it in the <laughs> disk drive, and I realized, oh, the disk drive isn't working. That's fantastic. But yeah, I ended up getting that to fix itself, too. So there were a little, couple of little things I had to jiggle about to make them work. But otherwise, yeah, not that many problems with it so far. Yeah. I mean, and I, I, I got accustomed to it quickly, and uh, for the most part, I really like it. I mean, Windows 7 is kind of like putting on a, a pair of comfortable old shoes or a sweater or something like that. And Windows 10 is like, oh, I just upgraded to, uh, you know, and I didn't, maybe I didn't get a 2016 Maserati, but I got a, a 2010 Jag. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, now if you, if you're just hell bent on, no, I don't want to go to Windows 10. Um, there is a utility that Tyler and I have actually used in our consulting business called the GWX control panel. And Steve Gibson has actually come out with one called Never 10. Because, of course, he would. That's a very of Steve course. Gibson move. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because, you know, let's face it, Steve Gibson is the kind of person that he he still loves XP. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he will not upgrade because he is too afraid of, I think afraid's a fair word, yeah. uh, cautious. There we go. Cautious. It's a better word than afraid. Uh, cautious about all of the things that come with a new operating system. There's going to be a lot of bugs, a lot of holes, a lot of stuff like that. And with his professional know-how, he sort of got himself in the mindset of, no, I'm not upgrading until I fix that stuff. You kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. It really is fair. But yeah, so that's why. Yeah. I have not used his Never 10 program, but we have <laughs> used the GWX control panel. And it sounds like that his program does pretty much what the GWX control panel is. is and mm. they're all based on information that Microsoft has made readily available on how to make these changes. They make some registry changes, and they just they just dumb it down and make it easier for the layperson. Right. Um, and it will get rid of, it, you know, a lot of times the Windows 10 ISO has already been downloaded to your machine, so it's taken up almost four gigs worth of space. 
So yeah. using one of these programs, you have the option of wiping out anything to do with Windows 10. And you may find yourself with an, an extra few gigs if you do it because, you know, you just don't want to go to Windows 10. And that's fine if you don't. Uh, nobody's going to force. Oh, wait. Yeah, they will. Microsoft's <laughs> doing there. <laughs> Moving on. All right. So <laughs> new study suggests Americans don't trust AI systems. <laughs> yeah, you right. I'm not going to trust no dang computer. <laughs> I find it interesting because it does single out Americans. Mm-hmm. So this is an article over at digitaltrends.com. And they're saying that um, even though it may be brilliant, it's just not trustworthy. Mm. <laughs> uh, they say that while we may be interacting with AI systems more frequently than we realize, hello, Siri, <laughs> a new study from Time suggests that, uh, or Time, et cetera, suggests that Americans don't believe the AI revolution is quite here yet, 54% of them claiming to have never interacted with such a system. Now, the details, what it, what it really digs into is that 26% of respondents said they would not trust an AI with any personal or professional task. Hmm. They'll let it do uh, send text messages, make phone calls, things like that. But 51% of them said that they would be uncomfortable sharing personal data with an AI system. And 23% of Americans who say that they've interacted with an AI reported being dissatisfied with the <laughs> experience. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Barnaby Lashbrook, CEO and founder of Time, etc., stated, In today's world, technological solutions provide a convenience in our lives that is unmatched by anything else. From on-demand apps like Uber to food delivery services like Seamless, which I've not heard of, by the way. Seamless, that is. I know what Uber is. Mm -hmm. it's, almost it's almost possible to avoid human contact altogether. Woohoo! <laughs> yes! I mean, I already order about 25% of my stuff from Amazon instead of going to one of the local stores and buying it. Yeah. It's because I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> when I go, I go... I've got a mission, and that mission is to fix a computer problem for one of my clients because I'm obligated under contract or they're paying me by the hour or I've got to go to the grocery store. Otherwise, unless it's just something I absolutely have to have, I'm I'm buying it from Amazon, baby. <laughs> Buy it today, get it two days from now. But, um, yeah. It says, curiously enough, humans also seem decidedly confident in their own abilities, with 35% of respondents saying the artificial intelligence would never match human intelligence. Mm. I don't agree with that. I'm, I'm saying get ready for your artificial intelligence Google Skynet overlords. <laughs> yeah, it's... There's there's still a lot of hurdles that we have to get over in AI before it would be completely useful. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they're working on things like oh, they called it Watson, didn't they? Yeah, the IBM Watson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, yeah. had to think. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they're working on things like Watson and stuff like that. I mean, it's I. I don't even know if it's going to be in either of our lifetimes that we ever have an AI system that's particularly useful. I mean, things like things like telling Siri to set a timer or something like that are fantastic, but until they got it a bit more accurate, there's no way I'm going to tell Siri to do something important for me, if that makes a sense. Would, would you contact my friend and tell them that we have to have a meeting at this time? I wouldn't let it. Right now, I wouldn't let a voice dictation system do that for me because the the, what, the potential screw-ups if it doesn't work right, right? Because it'd all be happening behind your back. You know, you're just telling them to do that. I mean, if they set up a system like in Siri or something where it it what I don't know, use the FaceTime API mm -hmm. or something. That way it connected their schedules and does it that way. Sure, that could work. But expecting it to be intelligent enough to go bip, 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 sent, and then it's all seamless and nothing got screwed up. I'm, 
I'm not personally at that point yet to where I would trust her to do that. Heck, she has problems with some of the words I say just because of my Kentucky accent. So, <laughs> Your Kentucky um, accent. <laughs> yeah, I did that on purpose. Uh, but, well, Siri is stupid. Yeah. I mean, I my own personal uh, experience with, and I have limited experience with Siri, mm-hmm. but Siri is inferior to Cortana. And if I have to do a search on my iPod, I open the Google app. I don't and talk yeah. to it if I want to do the voice dictation. And it's always a lot better than Siri has for me. <laughs> yeah, and, so. and me having an Android phone, that's what I always do. Mm. You know, I hit the microphone at the top uh, of the phone because that's where the search bar is and just tell it, you know, what I'm looking for. And mm. about, I'd say 85 to 90% of the time, it's it's accurate. I would have no problem telling a you know an echo or a siri or whatever um you know <laughs> hey barbara i don't know <laughs> uh schedule a schedule a meeting with john smith at 2 p.m. on thursday and then it you know it would actually send the meeting invite and of course i'm going to look over it uh, eventually and make sure that it did it i mean mm-hmm. you're going to get some kind of response back that it, it that it's happened mm. so that's the reason why I, I would be fine with that. Now, 66% of these these participants said that they would not share financial data with AI systems. Right. I'm kind of in agreement with that right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't want to glitch in your financial right. data. <laughs> Honestly, as much as I love stuff being online, and I run all of my finances online, I watchdog it every single morning. The first mm-hmm. 30 minutes, well, not not specifically the first 30 minutes of every morning, but at least 30 minutes of every morning, I am going through all of my financial data. I'm looking at what I've billed, what I've received. I'm using QuickBooks, and I'm keeping it all of my checking. You know, I got two checking accounts, three checking accounts, actually, two personal and one business. Those are all updated. Credit card numbers are updated. Uh, as far as balances and stuff like that, I'm keeping a tally on everything. And then I've got a spreadsheet where I've got, you know, budgetary information where I'm keying in stuff like, I know I got to pay this, this has come up, how much money I'm going to have left. And I'm doing all this online. And there have been times, it does unnerve me if I ever stop and think about the fact that, you know, what would happen if I could no longer access all this stuff? Yeah. I would be SOL. Completely, because yeah. Because I have no hard copies of any of this stuff. None. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a frightening prospect. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Anyway. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, I, I wouldn't trust it with financial data right now, but there's a lot of other things that I would trust an AI with. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about saying it on a recorded podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not tossing a challenge out there for anybody to come after me because I don't want you to. I'm just <laughs> saying I'm actually not atypical. I'm actually typical of the way I wouldn't say people my age, but definitely the younger the younger crowd. Look at the millennials, and you may be atypical, Sam, but most millennials manage everything online. Mm-hmm. All their financial information, every and hell, they don't even do it from a web browser. They do it from their smartphone or a tablet. <laughs> yeah, I use a web browser, so that makes me out. <laughs> yeah, so, but um, I trust it enough. I think I think that part of it has actually matured enough that we don't have to worry about it. Mm. As long as you use proper safeguards, don't use the same password for all of your financial systems. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I use LastPass. I have no freaking clue what my passwords are. I don't mm-hmm. want to know them because they they are complicated as hell. Yeah. Uh, there's no way. I can't make rhyme or reason of them. Uh, there's no way. I could not hack my own password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I like it that way. Mm. But uh, so, yeah, I am i don't think I fall in the, the majority of this group, but I do have to, I do share a commonality with them about not trusting financial data with an AI quite yet. Yeah. Um, professional data? Eh, I don't know. That To me, that kind of falls under the example of, you know, having it set up a, a meeting at a specific time on a specific day with a particular person. 
Mm. I think it can do that. I think it's good enough to do that. Anyway. All right. If you ever needed any reason whatsoever <laughs> to finally solidify the fact that you don't need to support Donald Trump for president, this, <laughs> this article right here should do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> North Korean state media offer support for, quote, wise politician Donald Trump. I love North Korea. It's great. It's great. <laughs> this is high energy. Kim Jong-un, very high energy. Fantastic guy. I love him. I love him to pieces. <laughs> oh. You yeah. knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. State outlet DPRK Today published an editorial Tuesday that called the business mogul a wise politician and said he could be good for North Korea. He doesn't even call himself a wise politician. He specifically avoids calling himself a politician. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Quote, there are many positive aspects to Trump's inflammatory policies. Trump said he will not get involved in the war between the South and the North. Isn't this fortunate from North Korea's perspective? (laughs) (laughs) You think? (laughs) Well, yeah, I would I would think so. Yeah. The author of the editorial also dismissed Hillary Clinton, calling her dull, (laughs) and saying that she hopes to use the Iranian model to resolve nuclear issues on the Korean peninsula. Peninsula. Whatever that is. I mean, the Iranian model? Okay. Oh, Lord. This is... uh, That's all I can say about that. Uh. (laughs) All I can say about it. I mean, it does seem like it's kind of a turnabout from what they've said before. Um, you know, before they just didn't have anything to really say. And because Trump has actually said that he, he would actually talk with uh, Kim Jong-un. He mm-hmm. said, I'd speak to him. I would have no problem speaking to him. And uh, North Korea's ambassador to Britain said his country had no interest in talking with Trump, calling the candidates overtures the dramatics of a popular actor. <laughs> Well, they're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this thing finishes up and says that North Korea should welcome Trump's proposals, suggesting that they would help Pyongyang achieve its goal of removing U.S. troops from the Korean Peninsula. Yes, do it now, the editorial reads. Who knew that the slogan, Yankee Go Home, would come true <laughs> like this? The day when the Yankee Go Home slogan becomes real would be the day of Korean unification. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. You know, with that kind of endorsement, who who wouldn't want to vote for Trump? (laughs) All right, so Intel has launched its first ever 10-core desktop processor. Uh, Sam, put this on your list. You need to run out and buy one right away. (laughs) Don't be shocked. Don't worry about the $1,723 price tag for the CPU. It's worth uh, it. <laughs> it's, oh, really now? <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> I mean, we can build you an entire system for less than that yeah. that will serve your needs for everything that you need to do and and gameplay and podcasting and all. But, I mean... This is extreme, man. This is extreme. <laughs> oh, wow. So this is part of Intel's 14 nanometer Broadwell e-chip family. It's the Intel Core i7-6950X Extreme Edition. And of, of course, course, it's primarily <laughs> aimed for gamers and enthusiasts. Yeah. Everything gaming has to be extreme in chips. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, it's got 10 cores, with each core having two threads per core. It runs at 3 gigahertz base frequency, but it is unlocked, so you can overclock it if you have the right cooling. Mm. It's also got this Intel's Turbo Boost Max 3 tech, which steers, quote-unquote, applications to the highest performing core, ideally Mm. meaning that even those programs which don't know how to use multiple processing cores should run faster. (laughs) I want one, and here's the thing. This thing is actually... Now, this is not 
This is not the first 10 core processor they've ever made. The Xeon, they make they make a 10 core Xeon, but the Xeons are are for the enterprise market. They're server processors. This is actually targeted toward the consumer market, the home mm-hmm. market. I don't know which home. <laughs> you know, Notch. let's be honest. Notch. Notch's home. Yeah. That's... I mean, when a processor costs close to two grand, <laughs> I mean, I've already stopped before I got started in that. Because, <laughs> like the last paragraph pointed out, Unfortunately, the top processor in Intel's range comes at a very high price, $1,723. Add to that the cost of a high-end graphics card and other components, and you could easily be hitting $10,000 for a single PC. Man. I tell you what, you better be making some major Twitch bucks. (laughs) Yeah, totally. (laughs) Jeez. Man, you got like 30,000 subscribers, and people are just, Tossing money and panties at you like there's no tomorrow. I mean, good grief. Mm. Now, granted, it's seventeen hundred twenty-three dollars today. Give it a year, it'll probably be like seven or eight. But I'm I'm sorry, the most I've ever paid for a processor is a little over three hundred dollars. Mm. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm just I'm just that cheap. <laughs> it's like no, no, but. They are targeting it toward the home market because of VR. So that, you know, because this there's, they're claiming that this is going to be the perfect processor for uh, virtual reality gaming, you know, whether it's on the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive. You know, I've heard a lot of things about the HTC Vive. I mean, I listened to, to Justin Robert Young talk about his HTC yep. Vive. I had no clue what this thing was. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely had no clue what it was. It looks pretty neat. I've seen him and Brian use it before, do some gaming on it and stuff. It's they like they like playing this one game where you're a bunch of robots inside of these vehicles that you build, and then you're in a field shooting at each other, mm-hmm. sort of thing. I can't remember the name of it. Any other time I'd be able to, but it looks fun. Um, there's there's even this um, game that's pretty much you know how Guitar Hero was. You hit the color buttons whenever it was at the right spot. Mm-hmm. Um, this thing's called Audio Shield, I think it is, and you've got two shields with each of your hands, and each of them is a color, and you sort of have to move your arms to hit the dots as they come at you, and that makes the sound come out of them, right? So yeah. it's taking that but making it coming towards you instead of going down. Cool. Well... It's a nice processor. I, mm. I I won't have it anytime soon. That's for sure. <laughs> Me neither. Unless suddenly my Patreon blows up, which isn't likely. I don't think I will either. <laughs> yeah. Everybody head on over to Sam's <laughs> website so that he can buy a seventeen hundred dollar a uh, processor. He won't be able to to buy the motherboard, the case, or anything else. But he'll have but that have- processor that he can sit right there. Yeah, I'll put it in a little case right behind me. I should have enough extra money to put it in a case, too. And it'll just be sitting right there and be like, that's what your money bought, you you folks. Congratulations. <laughs> and, and what you'll do, yeah, and, and you'll have another goal. And it'll be like, and the next goal is to get the motherboard. We'll get this system built in about mm, five years. Yeah. Which means then the processor will be obsolete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. All right. Um, yeah, this, this story made me think because uh, I listened to the, the latest um, jury podcast, the one where he had his wife on, Jury Moore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't realize where she worked. <laughs> I was wondering if you knew about that I, I or did, not. Yeah. I did not. So full disclosure, my son, oldest son, does work at Twitch. And so I actually asked him, did he, <clears throat> did he know her? His and response the- was, ish. Ish. <laughs> yeah, ish. <laughs> Diamond Club stuff floats all around you, Donovan. You can't get away from it. I know. Well, I, I finally uh, requested to be friends with uh, Justin on Facebook, and mm. uh, which, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's he just goes ahead and is friends with everybody, but I was actually surprised at how quickly it was like I clicked it, and like 15 minutes later, it's like, hey, he accepted your friend request. I'm like, cool. Mm. Yeah. I started to be friends with her, but I just started following her Mm. even though that does seem a little bit more stalkerish doesn't it (laughs) anyway all right 
Uh, so we jump out. <laughs> we we go from politics to tech back to politics. Wow, somebody needs to actually organize these things. Wonder you think? The, I wonder who the <laughs> bonehead was that put these in order. <laughs> All right, so this is actually dealing with Glenn Beck. Um, now, mm. you know who Brad Thor is, right? Uh, he's sounds a, familiar. He's a, he's a thriller author. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a writer. So Glenn Beck, of course, you know, has his... Uh, uh, the quick background behind Glenn is Glenn is a, a, is an old radio guy, and then he was on CNN, and then he was on Fox, and then, of course, he launched his own thing called The Blaze and all this other kind of stuff. But apparently, his radio show is still in syndication on Sirius XM. Okay. This week, because of something that Brad Thor said in an interview, um, Sirius suspended Glenn's show for a week. So I'm going to play that clip. I've got it queued up. So here okay. we go. Because he's a businessman who always gets things done, and so he BS. knows he has to compromise. BS. BS. Trump does not compromise. Trump has the ability to hire and fire people, to hire contractors, fire contractors. People who work for Trump can work for him or stop working for him. If he gets into the White House, we have to deal with him. And I'll tell you, one of the best examples I have seen of who Trump really is, I have been mistakenly comparing him to a potential Mussolini. And about a week ago, Foreign Affairs did an amazing article about the Caudillos, the strongmen of Latin America, and that is who Trump is. He's a Chavez. He is a Peron. That is the type of guy he is, and I guarantee you, Glenn, that during his presidency, during his reign, if you will, he is going to petition the American people to allow a temporary suspension of the Constitution so that he can help America get back on his feet again. He is a danger to America, and i got to ask you a question, and this is serious. This could bring down incredible heat on me because I'm about to suggest something very bad. Here it, goes. it is a hypothetical I am going to ask as a thriller writer. With the feckless, spineless Congress we have, who will stand in the way of Donald Trump overstepping his constitutional authority as president? If Congress won't remove him from office, what patriot will step up and do that if, if he oversteps his, uh, his, his mandate as president, his constitutional granted authority, I should say, as president? If he oversteps that, how do we get him out of office? And I don't think there is a legal means available, I think it will be a terrible, terrible position the American people will be in to get Trump out of office, because you won't be able to do it through Congress. Now, did you pick up on what he potentially was saying? Well, he did say what what patriot will step up and, well, yeah. Assassination. Yeah, pretty That's much. Pretty, pretty <laughs> much, without saying it, he was saying that we would have no recourse if Donald Trump were to get in and be president and do all of these things, that Congress would not be able to get him out of office. So someone yeah. would basically have to kill him. Yeah. Um, now, Brad has since come out, and, and I don't have it in front of me, but I do remember reading it earlier today. He has since come out and said, no, that is not what I meant. Mm. But um, I'm not entirely sure if that's not what he meant, what he, what he meant. But, I'm not sure if I would have gotten that context if I didn't already know what the story was, if I'm completely really? honest. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I, it was, to me, if I take that context out of my head, I probably would have taken it more as a, this is a guy who's panicking because there's no way we can escape this, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, it's not necessarily that anybody needed to kill him or something like that, right? It's more along the lines of just... If he gets in, we're screwed because there's no legal way for us to deal with this, you know. Yeah, through but, any means whatsoever, you know, sort of speak. So yeah, but how how else could you, how else could you, interpret the, what patriot is going to stand up and do what yeah. needs to be done? Yeah, if it if it weren't for that line, I could probably let the rest of it slide. But because of the what patriot thing, that's what makes it sort of. Go, hi, hi, you know. But if you take that line out of it, then the rest of it doesn't give that context. It was so quick. You, you almost missed it Yeah. if you didn't watch it, right? Yeah. I mean, I had to skim through it and actually find the, the particular segment of the entire interview where mm -hmm. this came up. 
So Sirius has suspended his program for a week, but Premier Networks, which is the actual program syndicator, said they have no plans to su- suspend the uh, the program. Yeah, it's some it's something your guest said. It's not like the host came out and said. <laughs> I was I was about to try to do a stereotypical radio host, but I know exactly who's going to come out, so I'm not going to. <laughs> It'll be Rush Limbaugh in like five seconds. You might as uh, well. You might as well. <laughs> I'll tell you right now that if Donald Trump got in this office, what patriot would possibly stand up and stand up and possibly deal with this? There's no legal way we could possibly do this. Rush Limbaugh on the EIB network. <laughs> I swear that was him. <laughs> oh, get on you. <laughs> All right, so that was that was interesting. So big deal, suspended for a week. It's not like it's gonna hurt him. I felt my cheeks go a bit red, the amount of energy I poured into the <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh, breaking news. Exclusive. Trump's 3,500 lawsuits unprecedented for a presidential nominee. <laughs> wow. You know he's being sued for that whole Trump University crap. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. So this one is dealing with a young lady who is a burlesque dancer. hmm And she had already flown one leg of this journey on JetBlue. But whenever she was uh, getting on the next leg of it, she had already gone from New York to Boston, and then she was going to fly from Boston to Seattle. The flight crew (laughs) asked her to please change what she was wearing, that it might might upset some of the passengers. They they might be, um, what's the word I'm looking for here, Sam? Um, Distracted. No, not distracted. Why is it I, I, I can't? Offended. They might okay. be they might be offended. So for, offended is usually code word for distracted, let's be honest. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> so for our video viewers, well, if you're viewing it would be video. Anyway, um I've got it up here on the page and there's nothing risque. It's not even burlesque style clothing. No. Uh, she's wearing a long sleeve shirt that's got a, a a tiger's face on it. She's wearing shorts that are yeah, they're short, but I mean, you know, her her female parts aren't hanging out, so I right. can't see those. And they're they're black and white striped, and then she's got uh, knee high socks that match the shorts. It's almost like there's just a gap in between the yeah. shorts and the socks, and that's just a little bit you can see her legs. I don't see anything offensive about this. I don't either. I, I don't either. So I've I have <laughs> it's been rare around here, but every now and then you'll have a tourist come through or something like that. I have seen girls with their butts, the literally the bottom half of their butts hanging out of their shorts. Okay. Oh yeah. I've I've seen a lot more quote offensive than that, you know, or something that could be considered offensive. I mean, that that's not anything compared to what I've seen. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, there's a thing running around on the internet that that uh, I think the first person to ever show it to me or mention it was, uh, and I've seen it multiple times, but it's one of those, well, back in my day, your shorts were actually longer than your vagina, you know, <laughs> yeah. kind of deal. And yeah. that wasn't the situation here. I mean, it to, wasn't. I mean, it wouldn't have distracted me. I would have looked and go, nice legs but so anyway she wound up going to a store in the airport terminal and paid 22 dollars to get a pair of size extra large women's pajama bottoms for <laughs> proper coverage to continue her journey home since then jet blue has reimbursed her for the cost of the pajama bottoms and has offered her a 162 dollar credit for a future jet blue flight well that's good they should be doing that yeah except like she pointed out, it's a nice gesture, uh, but I don't really want to fly JetBlue again. <laughs> and they told me they couldn't give me a cash refund. So mm-hmm. it's like, here's a $162 credit for the next time you travel. Well, I don't want to fly your rinky-dink damn out uh, airline. <laughs> well, we're sorry. We can't give you cash back. <laughs> well, F you. I mean... <laughs> kinda. She has the... she. On a side note, she does have the best burlesque name I've ever heard in my life. Maggie McMuffin. Yeah. Yes. Yes. (laughs) 
I don't normally like McMuffins, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm getting a little hungry. Anyway. I was I was joking. I was jokingly thinking. I was like, man, she spent a lot of mornings in McDonald's if that was what she came up with for her <laughs> for her. Because normally, what is it? A favorite author or something like that? There's various naming conventions for you coming up with a stage name of any sort, whether you're an actor, burlesque, yeah. more adult things, you know, stuff like that. There's usually naming conventions that are mm-hmm. appropriated, but I've never heard McMuffin before. It's 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 cute. You know, if for some reason, the word McMuffin in this context has a bit of a awe <laughs> context to it, as opposed to you think, <laughs> McMuffin. No, I'm not eating that. <laughs> It's better so it's, than Bodie McBoke-faced, yeah. anyway. So. <laughs> Call back. Yep. <laughs> oh. She said, if companies are going to seek action against people like me, they should clearly list their boundaries and their dress code. Mm-hmm. I think this seems like a small thing, but it's connected to a lot of larger things in our society, and it's something JetBlue really needs to analyze. And I have to agree with that. Yeah. Because... Of the simple fact that she flew part of the journey on the same airline, nobody said anything about it. Yeah. But the flight crew of the next leg, they want to get offended. Yeah. I'm going to say it here, and I don't mean anything (laughs) against it, but I bet you they were a bunch of (laughs) right-wing zealot Christians. (laughs) I said it! (laughs) Yes! I was... I was thinking probably sassy women, but okay. They're, yours is less likely to get you in trouble than mine probably will. So, <laughs> Okay, so they're sassy, white, right-wing, <laughs> zealot, Christian women. <laughs> there. There, that'll there. work. <laughs> I have alienated everybody. Yeah. Yes. Send your hate mail to uh, Sam at... <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, yes, I was disturbed, but entertained. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to the next one. And this is a story that I actually came across late in the afternoon. And mm-hmm. I did kind of think of you whenever I saw it. And I was like, yeah, definitely have got <laughs> to, uh, to cover this. Uh-huh. All right. So for those on video, you're you're getting a a treat, but uh, all of these will be in the show notes. Mm. So over in China, we had uh, a Lego display, a Lego sculpture, a $15,000 Lego sculpture (laughs) that after the exhibition had been opened a mere one hour was completely destroyed. Mm. (laughs) I'm seeing a theme here. Children just can't be trusted. <laughs> Apparently not. I, uh. <laughs> oh, I, let me give people some advice. Don't have kids. <laughs> mm. Or if you do, keep them locked up until they're about 15. <laughs> I don't mean that literally. So anyway, um, we had a young Chinese boy who pushed over a giant fox figurine of Nick from Zootopia. Mm. This was on Sunday at the Lego Expo in Ning- Ningbo, China, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and it said it, it, it happened that it was the very first day of the exhibition, and the display had been open to the public <laughs> for no more than an hour when the incident occurred. Now, here's what I don't understand. As Sam moves around. <laughs> yeah. What, what I don't understand is this thing was roped off. So is this is this yet again a situation of parents just not paying attention? <laughs> Probably. So the figurine is said to cost more than a hundred thousand won or or fifteen thousand one hundred and seventy dollars. The artist, his name is Zhao, he spent three days and nights painstakingly piecing together the figure figurine. It it looked cool. It does. It's awesome. Le- Lego sculpturing has become a thing. It's, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> but now, you know, I've, I got to admit, I, I kind of, I, I don't know, Zal 
the fact that he declined compensation mm. because he insisted the child had not meant to break the figurine. Mm. So he went on to post pictures of the broken figurine on his Weibo account, but he did not elaborate about what had happened except to say he was heartbroken to see his hard work destroyed. Mm. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be mad at the child. Right. Yeah. I'd be mad as hell at the parents. <laughs> yeah. I'd be getting some moolah out of the parents. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not like I could think of any possible method <laughs> of doing anything about a kid destroying your work like that. It's it's not like I could think of any horrible creature made out of Lego that I could possibly use anyway. <laughs> Uh, and for audio listeners, I did hold up a little Lego Dalek. Yeah, so. that's what I was going to point out. <laughs> <laughs> All you needed to add was something off the soundboard. Exterminate. I actually do not have that on my soundboard, shockingly <gasps> enough. <laughs> what? I know, right? <laughs> what? No. What is wrong with you? <laughs> you you need to fix that post-haste. I do, yeah. So yeah. it's, it's kind of sad. It was a... Uh, Oh, man, just to see all those Legos just all over the floor after this guy spent over three days mm. doing this. Yeah. Uh, it, it It is heartbreaking. Very. So, word to all you parents out there with young children, <laughs> please pay attention and discipline your children. Don't take your eye off the ball. Please. And do like, like I suggested. Put them on a leash. I don't <laughs> care if you think it's animalistic or not. If you can't figure out another way to get your children to act like they're supposed to and not go and destroy someone's hard work or fall your ass in a gorilla pit so that a 17-year-old endangered gorilla <laughs> winds up having to be killed because of your ineptitude, I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's where we're going to end it. Mm. All right. So, Sam, what are you up to? Where's all your stuff? What what you be doing when you're not here? Well, well you can find all of my other podcasts and stuff like that, including... I need to look into that. Yeah, that's I was going to say, else. folks, go ahead and, and sign... Yeah, support him on Patreon. I think he needs a new mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can do that at tscn.tv slash support, uh, or you can find all the stuff, including, as I was going to say, Lego Dimensions Let's Plays, where this little thing comes into play, um, at tscn.tv, or find all of my social media links at about.me slash labtech7. Yeah, and all my stuff, uh, including this show, and, uh, well, pretty much this is really the only show we're doing now, because we, we decided to shutter text, uh, text Lant mm. because we do, we talk about technology in this and we do this show twice a week and we were doing the other one every other week and the tech news was getting stale too quickly and it just didn't yeah. make sense so mm. you know this is more up to date now and this is a good format so mm. uh, but everything's over at slant.fm uh, my social media is at about.me slash gd adkisson and if you have any feedback uh, for this show or in any of the previous shows that we've talked about even if it's hate mail i'll take it i'm a grown <laughs> man <laughs> I ain't scared. Uh, mm. That email address is feedback at slant.fm. If you want to leave a voicemail, the number is 313-718-2557. That is a different number than the call-in number. Remember, we record this show live each Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Watts. Everybody, take care. Bye-bye.
This show is a production of the Slant FM Digital Network. Find more at slant.fm.